she watched the surveillance in the supermarket, blatantly stole the cake, but just after she walked out the door, she deliberately slowed down her pace, waiting for someone to catch her. Old lady, the clerk was about to say something, but the grandmother took the initiative and said, I did it, please arrest me. They were baffled. The grandmother went to the manager again, but the manager didn't want to call the police over this trivial matter. She waved her hand and let the old man leave. Why does this grandmother want to go to jail so badly? Because there is nothing to live for. Her name is Anna. A few days ago, her best friend died. They were supposed to retire together, but now the house is silent. And what's worse, this night a grandfather came to the door to offer his condolences to his best friend. Anna agreed. The next day, the house was looted of all the money and belongings. Anna went to the police to report the robbery, but she couldn't even remember what the thief looked like. With no money, Anna couldn't afford to pay the rent and moved to a rented apartment. Just when she felt her life was hopeless, a news story caught her attention. An old man was caught stealing and said he wanted to spend the rest of his life in jail. Anna got an attention. The person next to her also said, Yes, the prison has food and housing. If you get sick, you'll be taken care of. But the question is how to get in. Anna obeyed the law but she had no idea how to commit a crime. One day she was shopping in the supermarket. Suddenly she saw her best friend's favorite strawberry cake on the shelf. Anna made up her mind and stole all the cakes. She was caught red-handed, but the manager took pity on her and let her go. Anna was very frustrated. Lily, the sales clerk, sensed that something was wrong and asked her why she stole. Unexpectedly, Anna's tears flowed down her face as she said, I haven't had any friends since I was little. After my parents died, I was left alone. Three years ago, I finally made a friend, and she left me. Maybe I'll be better off in prison. But why is it so hard to even commit a crime? Anna bawled like a child. Lily saw such an old man for the first time. Who would do such a stupid thing if they weren't desperate? She did not give Anna those empty consolation. Instead, she cheered her up. Anna pulled herself together. An absurd plan to go to prison was set in motion. That day she met a man, Tom, a lone shark. Anna has an idea. How about stealing his money? It's a way to help the people. She borrowed 100,000 yen from Tom and said she couldn't pay it back. She offered to clean his house to offset the cost. Seeing her sincerity, Tom agreed. This was exactly what Anna wanted. As soon as he left, Anna searched around the house. But after a long search, she only found a few pieces of change. She couldn't go to jail for stealing such a small amount of money. Anna thought she might as well rob him. She bought a fake gun. She got Tom drunk first. Then she tied him up while he was asleep. But she was so clumsy that she dropped the gun on Tom's leg in a panic. How can you rob me with this thing? You're looking for death. So this Tom drunk is pretending. He planted a miniature camera in the house. He had seen through Anna's plan. Her carefully planned crime was discovered. Once again, Grandma cried in frustration. But Tom did not blame her. Instead, he handed her a tissue. It turned out that they were in the same boat. Tom said he was rich but lonely. He lent money to others to enjoy the feeling of being needed. Until the day Anna came to work for him. His cold heart felt a long lost warmth. Tom forgave Anna. Anna had a hard time on her way home. She walked downstairs to her house. Lily was there. Anna asked her what was wrong. Lily suddenly gets serious and says she helped her come up with a crime plan. Kidnap me. You extort a ransom from my cop dad and you'll definitely go to jail. Anna froze. She thought Lily was joking, but Lily was adamant. She said she always wanted to drop out of school to become a professional surfer, but her father thought school was the most important thing. Lily thought that maybe if she was kidnapped her father would get nervous and really take her ideas seriously. She took Anna to the beach. Looking at Lily's determination to ride the waves, Anna agreed. She called Tom. Together they took Lily away. Then Anna tried to use the voice changer to call Lily's father, but she was so nervous that she couldn't even speak clearly. She had to ask Lily to do it. Lily stammered and managed to say, If you don't do what I say, I'll throw your daughter into Tokyo Bay and feed her to the fish. Her father froze and came straight to Anna's house. He wanted to apologize to Anna. I'm really sorry for the trouble my daughter has caused you. It turns out that as a child Lily used to play kidnapping games with her dad. The phone call just now revealed itself as soon as he opened his mouth. If you don't do what I say, I'll throw your daughter into Tokyo Bay and feed her to the fish. Anna still wanted to help Lily fight to realize her surfing dream. But no matter how much she pleaded, Lily's dad just said coldly, This is none of your business. Lily's dad obviously didn't know that the surfing competition was in two days. The whole country will be participating. If you win, you can go abroad for further training. Only Anna knew how much Lily cared about this competition. She bowed to Lily's dad, despite her face, and asked him, Please come and see her play. You won't be disappointed. 
When he first arrived at the match he still looked disdainful, until he saw a familiar figure walking on the waves in the sea. He was very surprised, since the death of his wife, his daughter had been sullen and unhappy. But at this moment, she showed her long lost confidence and smile. Surfing, a lonely battle, she is now putting her life on the line and giving it her all. Although Lily only took second place in the end, the barrier between father and daughter disappeared. The next day, Lily happily told Anna that her dad was no longer against her surfing. He also supported her to participate in the next section of the competition. Anna felt happy for her, but Lily was a bit sad. She said that if you go to jail, you won't be able to watch me surf anymore. Anna was a little shaken too. Yes, in jail she wouldn't be able to see anything. She thought she had some hope in life, but reality didn't give her a chance to breathe. Anna went home and tried to lie down when the power went out. She asked her landlord and found out that the house was going to be demolished. She had been able to find a place to live and now she was homeless. She opened her bank book and saw that she had very little money left. She walked aimlessly on the street like a walking corpse. But then she suddenly saw that Tom lying unconscious on the roadside again. He kept pouring himself alcohol and wouldn't say anything. It turned out that Tom had long had cancer and had been suffering from the disease for most of his life. He said he wanted to end his life and asked Anna to help him so that Tom could be relieved and Anna could go to prison as she wished. Looking at Tom's serious face, she deeply understood the hardship of living. She made a choice. She decided to help him. Here's the plan for the murder. Anna and Tom pretend to argue at the bridge. Then Anna accidentally pushed Tom off the bridge. The plan sounded simple enough, but when Anna looked under the bridge, she became dizzy, jumping down at this age. In midair are scared to death, right? Tom said he would start acting as soon as the passersby came. Before he died, he also forgot to say thank you. At a time like this you are still willing to help me. I think I have made a friend for the first time in my life. Anna suddenly remembered that since the death of her best friend, Lily had said the same thing to her. She then realized that these days, both strangers had treated her like a friend. She thought that if she lost her best friend, she had lost the whole world but all the way through the prison program. They'd been with her through all these ridiculous things. Isn't that friendship? Two, Anna's thoughts were interrupted by a few passers-by. Tom immediately acted up, grabbed Anna and leaned towards the bridge. But Anna's heart was in a struggle. She still couldn't do it. Tom did not die in the end, but he did not blame Anna. Although I did not die, but I'm still quite happy. Anna burst into tears. She promised Tom that she would take care of him when he was sick because that's what she should do as a friend. Lily rushed over when she knew the news. Anna suddenly bowed to her and said a decision. I give up going to prison, since my good friend died. I've been alone since my best friend died, and I have no more attachment to the world, which is why I committed the crime. I want to try a little harder outside of prison. Anna is no longer alone. She also wants to see Lily ride the waves and to be with Tom in his old age. Because of her new bond, she finally found the courage to live.